Welcome to the class. I hope you're okay. I hope you're there. So um, it's a good weather today. Um, it's just started, inshallah. So I'll give some, some more time to some of the students to join, inshallah. And I hope and I hope that you you got a chance to just review what we did yesterday, inshallah. Uh, and um, because what we did yesterday is going to come into play today as well. And also what we did so far overall is going to come and play together today, inshallah, as well. Because I plan to touch on um, a jumla ismiya, which is the ism based sentences. And after this topic, uh, your ism studies are closed. So well done. So after this topic, your ism studies um, close for now. <laughs> Let me put it that way, because there's always one. So there's always something new to learn. There's always something new. Um, so inshallah, you will have covered a very major part of ism studies. Um, so I want to just make sure that you are completely comfortable. Okay. So as always, what we will do is uh, we will take a quick review of what we did yesterday and um, then we'll jump into the new topic. Okay, good. So let me begin, inshallah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So I'll, I'll just share my screen with you. There you go. You should be able to see my screen very soon. Okay, so as I said, as I usually say, I have my broadcast in front of me, so I will be able to see what you see. Inshallah, and uh, there should not be a problem. Okay, everything seems to work for now. So what we did last time, I just effectively we did the practice. I just don't want to do, do the practice again for the uh, for the pointers. What I want to do is I want to just revise the the advanced notes of the pointers that we did. So we are all on the same page. Okay, so we are all on the same page. Okay. So what we want to do is uh, we want to revise the advanced notes on on the pointers. Okay. Advanced notes on the pointers. So what were the advanced notes on the pointers? Case one. The first case was when you have to point to the mudaf, pointing to the mudaf, okay. pointing to the mudaf. The second case was um, maintaining. Maintaining the word the, okay? Maintaining the word the. These were the two cases. These were the two cases. And we, we discussed that yesterday. I just want to run through the same, same exercise again a little bit, uh, same examples again, so we are all completely aligned and we understand. And let's do it collaboratively, inshallah. Okay, let's do it collaboratively, inshallah. So pointing to the mudaf. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to write the same mudaf, same mudaf. Uh, the, the problem was, what was the problem in this? The problem was, if I say, if I say uh, house of Allah, let's say house of Allah. Okay. So this is something I can write, like, uh, for example, bait, bait is house. Baitullahi. Okay? This is an idafa. Light no al followed by jar. Baitullahi. Okay? Light no al followed by jar. Baitullahi. This is easy, right? If I want to say this house of Allah, I want to say this house of Allah. So how would I say it? How would I say it? How would I write it? So the problem was Baitu is if I do the properties of Baitu. I want to use a pointer because now this is there's a pointer called this here. Okay, now is it can be either haza or hazihi. So in this case, which one do you think would it be? Is it gonna be haza or hazihi? Which one is it gonna be for baitu? Any ideas? Any thoughts? Is it gonna be haza or hazihi? You just need to look at the, just need to look at the gender and the numbering. 
Yes, Haza, exactly. Tell her. Very good. Because Baitu is singular feminine, singular masculine, right? Baitu is singular masculine. So we will use Haza. So what I would do normally in the normal circumstances, I would just say Haza. Haza Baitu. Baitullahi. Baitullahi. Okay. If everything if the world was perfect, if the world was perfect, then this should have this should have worked. Okay. Baitullahi. But the world is not perfect. But the world is not perfect because what I've done here is I've created a sentence, isn't it? I've created a sentence, which I do not want. This is a sentence. I do not want this. I have a, I have a fragment. This Baitullahi is a fragment, and I've created a sentence. So to avoid creating a sentence, what I do is I put an al. Okay? I put an al. I say, okay, I've created a sentence, my mistake. What I'm going to do now is put an al. Al-Baytullahi. Al-Baytullahi. Okay. But in this case, what I've done is I've put an al in front of the mudaf, right? I've put an al in front of the mudaf, meaning I've destroyed the mudaf. Destroyed the mudaf. Okay. I've destroyed the mudaf. So it's not going to work, right? It's not going to work. Because mudaf cannot have an al, so it's not working out for me. So I cannot, I cannot say that. In this case, the sentence, the sentence that I had, this would not be a fragment. And in in the second case, I've destroyed the mudaf. So I I say okay. The only option left is I don't have to put an al to bait, and I cannot put a pointer before it as well. So why not just keep it simple? So we just say baitullahi the way it is. And I just put, put the pointer in front. Just put the pointer in front. Baitullahi has a. That would be. That would mean. That would mean. This house of Allah. Okay? This house of Allah. Okay? So I want all of us to understand the process and the problems. Okay? So this one, the Baitullahi was a fragment. Okay? The Baytullahi was a fragment, was a fragment. Okay. Now this would mean this house of Allah. So that's one case we did. When you point to the mudaf, you cannot point to a mudaf uh, unless you want to make a sentence. Because if you have to maintain the fragment and point to the mudaf, you have to move the pointer in the in, in the, on the other side, right? In the end of the mudaf. Uh, at the end of the idah for fragments. Otherwise, otherwise, it keeps on destroying it. That was one case we did. Okay? That was one case we did. Now, the other case. The other case. The other case was about maintaining the word the. Okay? So, if I say this is... Uh, if I say this... If I want to say this is a house... This is a house. I can easily say, I, I can easily say, ha, haza, baitu, baitun, haza, baitun, baitun. Okay, haza, baitun. This is a house. That's simple for me. Okay, that's simple for me. Okay, because. Uh, because it's not a fragment, it's a sentence. Not a fragment, it's a sentence. Uh, so I don't have to. I don't have to say uh, I, 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 because it's not a fragment, it's a sentence. I don't have to put an un, right? So it's just normal sentence. Now, if I say this house, oops. If I say this house, then I would say Haza. Al baitu, right? And because I'm putting an al, I will I will not give a double accent, right? Hazal baitu. That's the fragment. Fragment. Okay? This house. Now if I want to say this is the house, this is the house. How do I say that? That's my challenge because I want to maintain this the. Okay? I want to maintain this the. 
So, so immediate thought comes to my mind if if I just say Haza I know Haza I know is this, okay? And I know if I say Baitu like this Baitun, then this is a house. I understand this, but if I just don't give it a double accent and I give it an al in the front, it should become this is the house. But the problem is. We have created a fragment, right? We have created a fragment, and what we need is a sentence. What we need is a sentence. This is a sentence, right? Created a fragment, but I need a sentence, so it's not going to work. It's not going to work like this. So there's something else I need to do. Okay, and I, if I just keep the all away, it is this is a house. So how should I make sure? How should I make sure that I maintain this the, this al, this al, okay? That was the problem. This al I need to maintain here, okay? This, this al. To maintain this al, the only option we've got is you just put a pronoun that maps to the ism, the baitu, in the middle, okay? You say haza, and you have baitu, now this is mean this means this is a house now I want to take a pronoun that can map to Baitu. which pronoun do you think would it be which pronoun do you think would it be that can map to Baitu? If you know the gender and the number of Baitun, you should be able to tell me which pronoun should be. If you know the gender and the number of the Baitun. It's one of the one of the easiest pronouns you know. Hua. Correct. It's Hua. Very good. Hua. Now you've separated Haza and Hua. Okay? Uh, sorry, Haza and Baitu. You've separated them. There's a there's an intermediary in between. Then Hua comes and says, "Okay, Haza, I'll talk to Baitu, and I'm going to make sure he maintains its al." So you also stay happy that it's a sentence, and Baitu is also happy that it has an al. Okay, and then you put an al, and you put an al to the sentence uh, to the, to this word, right? So now Hua is allowing Baitu to maintain an al. At the same time, Hua is allowing Haza to maintain a sentence, right? Because there's no al after it. You understand? It is still a sentence. It's still a sentence. And we have maintained the same thing. If you achieve the same objective, this would be this is the house, okay? This is the house. These were the two cases we did yesterday, okay? Two cases we did yesterday any questions on this any any confusions any questions anything that you that is still not clear because if that's clear then we have done the pointers and then we can move forward inshallah okay give me one if you're fine give me one if you're fine so i know Alhamdulillah. Okay, very good. So let's move on then. So inshallah on the next page. Today we're going to start a topic of ism based sentences. Based sentences. Ism based sentences. It's an interesting topic and it will bring everything together inshallah. Okay, ism based sentences. We call them in Arabic. What is a sentence called in Arabic, in Urdu or Arabic? It's called Jumla, right? We just write it different in Arabic. It's called Jumla Ismiya. Ismiya. Jumla Ismiya. Okay, you can call it Jumla Tun Ismiya Tun. Jumla Tun Ismiya Tun. Okay. Ism based sentences. Okay. 
And there is a shadda on the year. Smiya. Okay. Jumlatun ismiya. Okay, that's what they call, they're called. Jumla ismiya. In short, we just call it jumla ismiya, right? Uh, it's it's simple. Now, before before we do this, um, I want you to understand uh, the, the general uh, general concept of sentences in Arabic. Okay, uh, so in Arabic, there are two types of sentences. One is the fail based sentences, which is involving the fails and the verbs that you call them. And the other one is the ism based sentences. We're just focusing on ism based sentences. Okay, ism based sentences. So ism based sentences, um, they can, they, 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 they're composed of, of words and fragments. Words and fragments. So what you have done so far, you have done so far, uh, a, you started studying the words. You have studied a study of words, study of words. You have you've done the study of words, uh, starting with isms, starting with isms, and some hearts. And that's what you've done so far. Study of words, and then what we did, we moved to fragments. Study of fragments. That's what we did, right? Study of fragments. In the study of fragments, we did five fragments. First, we did idafa. Did we did mosuf sifa first? Mosuf sifa, and then we did idafa. Then we did harf of jar. Then we did harf of nasab. And then we did point of fragments. Point of fragments. Okay. These are the five fragments we did. And in each fragment, you would notice the study of words you did in the first step, they start to bring multiple words together. You started with understanding of single word, ism, its properties, status, number, gender, type, flexibility, light, heavy, and so on, all of that stuff, right? That was the study of words only, study of words only. Okay? And then you, you moved on to the fragments, where fragments started to bring those words together. It, they were made up of more than one word, but they were not a lot of words. They were just more than one word, sometimes two, three, but, but they are basically not single words. They're more than that. Now that you, now you're jumping into the study of sentences, study of sentences. Now st study of sentences will bring together the, the fragments. It brings together multiple fragments, okay? Um, so how multiple fragments will come together and start to create sentences which give you complete information, okay? That's how we have been going so far. Okay, so just wanted to give you this overall picture of, of how is where we stand today. Inshallah, after the study of sentences uh, in isms, uh, you will be done with the isms and we will move on to the failed topic, which is also a very interesting topic to study. So, Okay. Now, what is a sentence? What is a sentence, uh, generally speaking, and it's some, some based sentence. What is an, a simple, a simple, some based sentence? Now, this word "simple" is important here. Okay, simple. There are complex ism based sentences as well, advanced ones, which we'll do later on, inshallah. Uh, okay, certainly Okay of Allah is full, okay? Whatever sentence, the car, example, is very... very fast. Simple sentence. Raise a word is in it, in each of them. Yes, you see this? There's a word is in it, in each of these sentences. This is a word to be. It is used, it is used in different forms as well. So you could say, 
I am. I am happy. Okay. Now in this case, this word to be is reflected as am here, right? It is still the word to be. Okay. Uh, it is still ref uh, it is still to be, and but it's reflected as am here. So the the concept of having a word to be that the word is in a sentence gives you a simplest ism based sentence. The more complex one, the more complex ones, for example. Uh, which we're not going to touch. I'm just telling you here so you know. For example, he ran towards the house. Now, there's no word to be here, but rather there is a, there's a verb here, right? There's a verb here. It's a verb. It brings together the isms and the fails together. This is, this is bringing ism and fails together. We're not doing this now. Not in scope for now. Okay, This is not in scope for now. These are, these are a bit more complex sentences, and for that, you need to first understand the fails. So we will focus on the simpler one, these ones, the ones on top that I'm coloring green now, okay? Where you have a word is in a sentence, okay? And that is the simplest ism-based sentence that you're going to do. That's how we are defining it, okay? The word to be, okay? Yes, yes, of course, no problem. So uh, a, a simpler, a simple ism based sentence is a sentence that has uh, the word is in it. That has the word is in it. Okay, let me write it here. A simple ism, a simple ism based sentence is the one that has the word is in it, okay? That's how we define it, okay? That's how we define it. Now this word is, is effectively the word to be, the word to be, right? Uh, it is used as is, it is used as am, it is used in many ways, okay? So it could be like, uh, I am a student, I'm a student, they are believers, okay? They are believers. So what you have is this am, this are, and all of that, this is different forms of the word is, yes? Different forms of using the word is effectively, right? It's a word to be. So in, this, in these sentences, you do not have a verb. You don't have a verb. You don't have a fail here, okay? You don't have a fail here. It's just the word is, which is used in a different form. That, that is the simplest ism-based sentence. There are more complex ones where you have a verb in it, just like this one that I gave an example of. He ran towards. Now, ran is not a verb to be. It's, it's, it's a standard verb. It's a, it's a fail that we have not done yet, okay? So I will not touch on this right now. I will just keep the focus on a simple ones where the word to be is, okay? The, the, the word is is used, that kind of sentences. And it will inshallah become clear when I give you some examples, okay? So just wanted to set the tone straight that this is going to be simple in some base sentences, okay? All right, okay. Now, the few things you need to understand. Um, few things we need to understand. One fact, there is uh, the facts about the language, Arabic language. There is no, there is a, rather let me put it that way. The word is, the word is that I'm saying. The word is this one. It does not exist in Arabic language. There is no word in Arabic that you can directly map to the word is. Okay? It does not exist in Arabic language. Okay? It's not there. Okay? A fact. It's a fact of the language. The word is does not exist in the Arabic language. Now, from the English perspective, you have to translate uh, you have to translate, for example, uh, for example, uh, um, let me just give you a simplest example. Alham, 
الحمد لله الحمد لله okay. you know this right الحمد لله now this basically translates to this translates to uh, all praise and gratitude gratitude is for Allah okay all praise and gratitude is for Allah okay this is how it translates to okay Alhamdu is a deep word it encapsulates the praise and the gratitude both in one word okay and lillahi's jar majroor this is the lam which is harf of jar that means four or half if you remember right and Allah the word Allah is in jar state so lillahi means for Allah so lillahi is for Allah here so let me highlight this here this reflects this means this and all praise and gratitude is basically um, the word alhamdu okay the word alhamdu now there is no word is in arabic so where did this is come from where did this is come from okay that's something i want to teach you today okay so when you take the arabic script and you translate it you need to know where is this is placed where is the invisible is this is what we call finding an invisible is because in arabic there is no is you have to decode it you have to find it and there are tips and tricks that you can use their logic you can use to find this invisible is okay and that's the topic i want to teach you today now okay so finding an invisible invisible is Finding an invisible is. This is what we want to learn right now, right? Okay, finding an invisible is. Okay, any questions so far? Any confusions? Note that Alhamdulillah is not a fragment. Only Lillahi is a fragment, which is Harf of Jar fragment, the yellow one. Lillahi is the fragment. Alhamdulillah is a full sentence. It's a full sentence. Okay. Okay. If you just look at Lillahi, it is a jar majroor, harf of jar. Okay. And if you look, Alhamdu, it's just a standardism, which is in rafa status and is proper because there is an al to it. Right. It's proper. There is no relationship between Alhamdu and Lillahi. There is no fragment between them. Just look closely. You will not find any fragment between between Alhamdu and Lillahi. Yes, Alhamdulillah as a whole is not a fragment. You're right. And Lillahi is a fragment, which is a harf of your fragment. Okay. And we'll and this is exactly why we are learning the the ism based sentences. Once we have learned this, we'll start doing this decoding together in the Quran. We'll do a lot of decoding together, inshallah. We'll do a lot of it. So you, you'll get a lot of practice, inshallah. Okay? Good. This is very interesting, and it's very, very mathematical. Uh, you will like it, I hope. Um, so any questions so far? Are we clear with this? Why do we need to do this finding an invisible is exercise? Um, there is no word is in Arabic. So when you have to learn the language and you have to do this translation from Arabic to English, you need to find where this is is placed. Where this is is placed. And and, and this this method of finding the is is called the finding an invisible is, which I want to teach you now. Okay? There are just five tips I will tell you. There are just five tips I will tell you okay and you just need to understand those five tips and then you are experts and phds in finding an invisible is and that that will form the fundamental uh, uh, understanding of the ism based sentences okay so let's start inshallah if there are questions please pop in first tip 
First tip, independent pronouns. Independent pronouns are usually followed by an are usually followed by an is. Okay. Independent pronoun are usually followed by an is. Independent pronoun are usually followed by an is. Let me give you an example. Remember this. Whenever you see independent pronoun, you say Anna, Anna Muslim. Anna Muslim. Anna Muslim. Okay? You know Anna, right? You know Anna. Anna means what? I. Muslim is Muslim. If you translate this, if you translate this, you would see Anna, you say I, and you say Muslim, you would see Muslim. I Muslim. Is it making any sense in English? Is it making any sense in English? I Muslim. In the English language, this is not the way you write. Because in English language, there is a dependency on the verb to be. Right? You need to introduce this word is. How do I know? So first tip is whenever you see an independent pronoun, the is is hidden after it normally. Okay? It's usually hidden after it. Okay? And then you have to choose the right form of is. Uh, you can say I is Muslim will not make any sense. I am Muslim will make sense. Okay? Will make sense. And even further, it's Muslimun, not Al Muslimun. So it's not, it's not, it's not proper. It's common. So why not use an article a? Uh? A, uh, okay. Uh, so Anna, Anna is referring. Uh, Anna is effectively referring to I here. A Muslim is referring to the Muslim. Okay, this one. And this am is basically an invisible is that you have decoded. It is not existent in the Arabic language. It is not there. But you have just decoded it because you know the tip. You know it's usually an independent pronoun is followed by an invisible is. So you just decoded it when you translated it. Okay? Okay, that's the first tip I want to tell you. That's the first tip. Let me give you another example that's just popping up in my mind. <clears throat> you, you read this, for example. You, you read this quite a lot. If you just forget kul for now, just forget kul for now. Okay, I don't want you to focus on cool. So I'm going to light it down here. Okay, cool. Who Allah. And I want you to just focus on who Allah. Okay, who Allah. So who? Who translates to what? Who is he, isn't it? And Allah is Allah. He, Allah. Is it making sense? How do I know where to put an is? How do I know where to not put an is? I know because I know that after independent pronoun, usually there is an is, which is invisible in Arabic. It's invisible in Arabic. So I'm going to put is here. He is Allah. He is Allah. So in that case, the word Allah is mapping to the word Allah in English. The word who, whoa, is mapping to he. You see that? You see that? So this is, you decode it after knowing that independent pronouns are usually followed by an is. Okay? That's first tip of independent pronouns usually followed by an is. Okay? This is one tip to find an invisible is. Okay.
Yes, yes, Allah who is proper. Yes, it's a proper name. Yes, Talha, it is proper. It is proper. Okay. Yes, you're right. You're right. But normally you would put the Allah in, you would put the Allah if there was someone else, Na'uzubillah, that was called Allah, right? There's no one else. There's no one else who is Allah, right? So Allah by itself does not require the. It, it does not require the. Okay? So Allah is a proper. It's like, it's like if you have a brother, Saad, yes? And you're talking to me about him and I know him. You would not say the Saad. You would just say Saad because I know that is the Saad, right? So Allah is only one, and there's no nothing, nothing that is that is uh, billah called Allah, right? There's nothing else, and therefore it's it does not really require the word the. If you put the word the, uh, it's fine grammatically, but in English it may not make much sense. So you say he is the Allah. So uh, the is normally used for things. When they can be a, they can be an indefinite form existent. They can be an indefinite form about this. A Muslim and the Muslim both are right because they can be a common Muslim that you're talking about or a very proper Muslim you're talking about. But when you talk about Allah, you're not talking about any common or proper, right? You're just talking about Allah who that is proper, given that's given. So you don't need that the here, okay? And when you do these translations, uh, just use common sense. Just use common sense. Translations would never be uh, perfect because uh, it's very difficult to translate Arabic language in a perfect English or any other language. Arabic is a very, very deep language. You will definitely lose the meaning of Arabic language on many occasions when you translate. And that's why scholars say the Quran is only in Arabic. And Allah says in the Quran, uh, Allah says in the Quran that I've revealed Quran in Arabic only. It's a it's a second ayah of Surah Ali Imran. The second ayah of Surah Ali Imran. I think so. Let me just um, re reconfirm that here. Yeah. Uh, let me just reconfirm. Second. Arabia. I need to find the ayah. I need to find the ayah somewhere here. It's uh, either Ali Imran or it's either Nessa or some some of one of these ayahs. Uh, I need to I need to find this. I'll find it out and I'll tell you guys. Inshallah, it's somewhere here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's either Imran um, or. No, it's Yusuf. Sorry, not Imran. It's Surah Yusuf. It's Surah Yusuf. Which one is Surah Yusuf? Surah Yusuf, Yusuf, Yusuf. Wait a second. Let me find it for you. I, I don't have the number of Surah Yusuf in my mind, but it's, uh, yeah, it's 12, number 12. Now look at this one. Second ayah. Second ayah. Inna anzalnahu Quranan Arabiyan la'allakum taqilun. Indeed, we have sent it down as an Arabic Quran that you might understand. Okay. So if you if you if you look if you look at this if you look at this. Okay. Inna, you know, it's a harf of nasab. Inna plus na is written as inna. Okay. And then you know la'allakum, la'allakum, la'allakum is, is a half of nasa. Again, la'alla means so that, so that, perhaps, hopefully, maybe. Kum is you, pronoun, attached pronoun, la'allakum, so that. And ta'kilun is effectively you to understand, to think, think about it. And Arabiya is basically in Arabic. Quran is Quran, right? So Allah is saying in the Quran itself, I've revealed it in Arabic so you can understand it, okay? So when you do the translations, you would always uh, lose a meaning uh, and you don't really need the the in the case of Allah here. 
Okay, because Allah is by default definite, and there's nothing else, nothing indefinite. There's no indefinite form of Allah. Okay. Good. So the second tip. Second tip. Second tip is pointer word. Pointer word. Pointer word followed by other than al. And you know this already, right? We did that. We said if a pointer is followed by an al, it's a fragment. Yes? And if it is not followed by al, we said it's a sentence. Now you know why it is a sentence. Because if it is not followed by an al, there is an invisible is in that. There is an invisible is in that. Let me let me give you the same example. Haza baytu. Haza baytun. Haza baytun. Okay. There is, it's not a fragment, right? It's a, it's a sentence. And why do we call a sentence? Because I know Haza translates to this, and Baitu translates to house, and there's an invisible is after Haza. There's an invisible is after Haza. And a house, because house is not proper here. Okay? You understand? So usually the pointer words are also followed by an invisible is. That makes it a sentence. Okay, that makes it a sentence. Is this working out? Is this clear? Can I have a fantastic one if it is clear or a very sad two if it is not clear? Excellent. Very good. It's simple. It's not too it's not difficult. It's just that you you just get to get used to it, inshallah. When we do practice, you get used to it, inshallah. The third one is also very simple. The third one is also very the first one is about pronouns. As soon as you see an independent pronoun, you can expect you can expect. So tell me, Imran, which part did you miss? Uh, I can quickly bring you up to speed. If it is not too long, I can quickly bring you up to speed because I don't want you to miss out on the remaining part of the class uh, if you're in. Any specifics that you want me to cover or would you want me to carry on and you will cover it in your own time? Yeah, I know this life with meetings. Okay, okay, so shall I shall I carry on then uh, and you will cover with your recordings? Okay, Jazakallah, thank you. Jazakallah, okay. So what we, what we are effectively doing is basically um, <clears throat> do, doing a concept of finding an invisible is and there are two tips. Uh, there are two tips uh, uh, that I've given so far. As soon as you see an independent pronoun, there is an invisible after it usually. And as soon as you see a pointer, pointer, which is not followed by an al, then there is an invisible is after it. And the third tip is, third tip is harf of nasab, that you also know, harf of nasab, and its ism, meaning harf of nasab, and its ism in nasab state, that comes after it, right? That comes after it, is usually followed, by an is. Okay? Is usually followed by an is. Okay? If I say, let me try to construct an example here. Um, I want to construct an example very quickly. Let's say, uh, if let's say, inna, inna allaha, inna allaha, sami'un, 
Alimun Sami Samion Oops Samion Oops What happened here? Samion Alimun Samion Alimun Okay, in Allah Samion Alimun I've just constructed this. I'm, I'm not sure if it is in the Quran like this, but I've just constructed an example here. Okay, so uh, there is a typo here. In this is inna, okay? inna Allah. Okay. okay, good. So inna Allah. When you look at inna Allah, now this is inna is a harf of nasab, and Allah, the word Allah, is its ism in nasab state. Yes, you agree. Ism in nasab state. As soon as you see harf of nasab and its ism combined, when I say combined, doesn't mean they have to be together. They may be apart as well. But the joining together, uh, inna would always have a harf, have its ism in nasab state. So after inna or, or harf of nasab, generally speaking, and its ism, you would have an invisible is. So you would say, for example, certainly Allah is certainly Allah is all hearing all knowing okay all hearing all knowing so certainly Allah this term this is a fragment right this fragment is coming from in Allah Sami on is all hearing all hearing and Alimun is all knowing. Okay, now you have found this invisible is as well in the middle. So as soon as you see harf of nasab and its ism, it is usually followed by an invisible is. Okay. Fourth one, and after that, there's just one left. Okay, this fourth one, which is proper. Followed by common. Proper followed by common. If you see a properism which is followed by a commonism, there is usually an invisible is in it. There is usually an invisible is in it. For example, uh, Al Qutubu. Al Qutubu. Sahiratun. Sahiratun. Now, Al Kutubu, Al Kutubu is proper. It is proper. You know that, right? It's proper. And the and the ism following it is common. And the ism following it is common. It's not proper. In this case, in this case, you usually would have an invisible is too. You would say, you would say the books. It's not kitab, it's kutubu. It's a broken plural, right? It's a broken plural. The books. The books, and then sagiratun means small. Small. Okay? Now this is sahiratun, small, okay? And the books, books is the is al qutubu. Now, I need to make sense of it. What do I do? I need to bring this invisible is. Which word do you think should I bring in that will make sense of this sentence? What is the form of invisible is I can bring in? The books dash small. Which word? What is the form of invisible is here? Any ideas, thoughts? It's plain English. R, yes? R. The books are small. The books are small. Good. You see? When you see the proper followed by common, then you have this invisible is concept. And this invisible is could be a uh, is, it could be am, it could be uh, uh, it could be normal is or R and so on. And the last one, and the last tip, 
And after this, I will give you some time to just review this in your mind and just get hold of uh, this, these, these tips. And then we'll jump into the exercise that will bring many things together, inshallah. Okay. The last one is the one that usually students like and also they keep on applying this all the time. Okay. It's called break in the chain. Break in the chain. Break in the chain. This is kind of your last resort. It's your last resort. Usually students try to make it the first resort as much as they can because it's easier a bit. Break in the chain means when you cannot find a relationship between the two words. When you cannot find the relationship between the two words. Okay. Then you say there is a break in the chain. The chain has been broken. Okay. The chain has been broken. Okay, for example, I say Arrujulu, Arrajalu, not Rajalu, Rajulu, Arrajulu, Fi, Adari, Adari. Rajulu fi adari. Okay. Now this translates to the man, and fi means in. You know, fi means in, which is a harf of jar, and adari is house. Okay, it's also a house. Okay, it's also it can be door, but it is also a house. Okay, in the house because it, there is an al to it, right? So. This part in the house, this part in the house is fi adari, fi adari, and arrajalu, arrajalu is the man, arrajalu is the man. Okay. Now, is there a relationship between arrajalu and fi? Is there any relationship? between Arrajalu and Fi. Do you find any relationship? If you try to, you will not, right? There's nothing. So there's a break in the chain. There's a break in the chain. So you would just bring an invisible is here. Okay? The man is in the house. Now, now let's try to understand this a little bit. Let's try to understand this a little bit. Now, al kutubu sagiratun. It also did not have a relationship between them, right? Al kutubu sagiratun. In number four here, it also did not have a relationship. So, I students tend to say, "Oh, it's breaking the chain." Yeah, of course, breaking the chain applies here, but another rule also applies, which is proper followed by common, right? Proper followed by common. So the better way is to just apply all the rules. If you cannot apply any of those rules, then deduce it's a break in the chain. Same story with the number three. Inna laha sami'un. After inna laha, there is no connection between Allah and sami'un. Is there? Allah sami'un. You may try to. I mean, there could be Masuf Sifa. In fact, they should be like this. Allah al asamiun al alimun. It should be al. I've written it wrong. It should be al asamiun al alimun. Okay. It should be like that. Okay. Now you would see them as a Masuf Sifa. Masuf Sifa. So there's a relationship. But when you go to number two. Haza baitu. Haza baitu. Or baitu baitu. Haza baitu. You will not find a relationship between Haza and baitu. So students may tend to say, oh, it's a break in the chain. Yeah, it is a break in the chain, but it the, the, the rule of the pointer followed by other than al also applies here. Right? So it's easy to apply break on break in the chain everywhere. Almost everywhere. Right, but keep the break in the chain as your last resort. Go and solve the first two first four conditions first. 
If you cannot solve them, then deduce it's a break in the chain. Okay? That's how the process should be. All right, so what I'll do now is I'll give you about uh, one or two minutes to just look at this and just try to bring them together in your mind. And then we'll jump on to the exercise, okay? And we'll do some practice. Okay, so just take two minutes or so. Okay, good, excellent. So give me one if you are ready to move forward. Can you give me one if you're ready to move forward? Great, excellent. Very good. So let's move forward, inshallah, on page number 32 of your notes. Let's move to page number 32 of your notes. Okay. So what I have shown you is written on this page. Okay. What I've told you is there. So what we have done here is already here. Okay. So quick review. Jumla ismiya. So fine thing the invisible is. You know why we find an invisible is because there is no is in the Arabic language and the basic ism based sentence is the one that has this word in it. The word is in different forms, right? The first one is independent pronouns are usually followed by an is. The second one uh, in the first one we did ana muslimun as an example where am was actually the invisible is. Second one pointer words. Uh, which are not followed by al, which are followed by something else other than al, are also invisible is, are followed by invisible is. In this case, we have this is, haza baitun, 
then harf of nasab and its ism is usually followed by is the number three so we we did that uh, we did a different example but here you can see this example okay i can i can do this example for you here so it's in allah in allah and now you have invisible is here is an is here in allah okay because there is an there is a harf of nasab and then uh, and it's ism and after harf of nasab and it's ism we usually have an invisible is okay allah kulli shay'in qadeer okay and then we did this proper followed by common proper followed by common where we said al kutubu sagiratun where we had this r as an invisible is and the last but not least we said blocking breaking the chain where nothing applies, uh, all of the above, nothing applies, then we see a break in the chain where the words do not have a connection between them. There's no such connection between them. Okay, now let's move on to this exercise and if this will inshallah clarify many things, uh, if they're still not clear. Okay, let's apply this. Let's apply this knowledge that we have gained so far. I'll, I'll keep the rules in the front as much as I can in this wait a second wait a second okay let's see how much is it possible okay all right so you can keep the rules in front of you if 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 you're if you're still not comfortable that's fine you can look at them and then try to solve it. Let's let's look at this one. Zalika min ayatillahi. Where do you think invisible is is, and why do you think it's there? Which rule applies? That's what I want to know. So where is the invisible is? It's there. What are you looking at here? Zalika. Min aya tillahi. Dalika min aya tillahi. So, yes, we see a pointer word. Yes, and we know the rule. We know the rule. Rule number two said. Pointer word followed by other than al. Yes? Pointer word followed by other than al. So there is no al after this pointer word. So I can say, okay, invisible is is here. This is where the invisible is is. Okay? Excellent. Very good. Now let's move on to the next example, which is Al Haku Al Haku Mir Rabbikum. Al Haku Mir Rabbikum. Where is the invisible is and why? Where is the invisible is and why? I'll give you a time, no problem. We've done a we have done a similar similar example. We've done a similar example. So there's al haku then min rabbikum. Okay, and I want to find. I I know if it is uh, independent pronoun, there's an invisible is. It's not. I know if there's a pointer, there's an invisible is, and it's not the case. I know harf of nasab and its ism, but this is also not the case here. I know proper followed by common uh, also gives me an invisible is, and I also know break in the chain gives me invisible is too. Okay, so proper followed by common. So what is common here, Tala? What, what is common? 
What is common? Let's think about this. Okay. Let's think about this. Al haqqu I understand is proper. I understand al haqqu is proper. But what is common? Is min common? What type of word is min? Let's think about this together. What type of word is min? Yes, I understand al haqqu is common, uh, proper, and min. Min, as you're saying, it's common. What type of word is min? Just three types of word in Arabic, right? So it's ism, fail, harf. It's a harf of jar. So do we have four properties of harf of jar? Does huruf have four properties? Status, number, gender, type. Think about it. Think about it. So status, number, gender, type, the concept of common and proper applies to harf or not, or not. Think about this. Understand? The concept of common or proper applies to isms only. It applies to isms only. So because it does not apply to harf, I cannot say it's proper followed by common, can I? I just can't. Yes, correct. Very good. It is not an ism. It's not an ism. So I cannot say it's common or proper. So all of the rules above, are, are they applying? The pointer, the pronoun, the harf of nasab, the proper followed by common, is anything applying here? I'm just forcing you, you all to think because I, I don't want to give you answer easily. I just want us to think because if you start thinking, you will really understand it, right? Right. So let's. I just I I'll just question you because I really want you to think about this. So if the top four rules are applying, then I can I can talk about this. But do you think they're applying? Yes. It's a broken relationship. There is a break in the chain, isn't it? You see that chain, break in the chain? There's a break in the chain. There's a break in the chain. It's it's break in the chain. Break in the chain. Break in the chain. Okay? There's no further rule applying here, right? So I don't have a choice. Don't have a choice. Good, excellent, excellent. This is how this is how we all will develop our thinking, inshallah. Okay. Now let let's look at this one. Let's see which rule applies here. Ana aksaru minka malan. Ana aksaru minka malan. Okay. Where is the invisible is and why? Where is the invisible is and why? Independent pronoun. Perfect. Yes. It's an independent pronoun. So there is an invisible is. Right? Independent pronoun. Just after the independent pronoun. Perfect. Very good. Very good. Let's move on here. فَلَعَلَّكَ بَاخِئٌ نَفْسَكَ فَلَعَلَّكَ بَاخِئٌ نَفْسَكَ Let's see if you can find something here. What is happening if you look, look closely? Where do you think would be an invisible is? فَلَعَلَّكَ بَاخِئٌ نَفْسَكَ If you understand if you understand Bahayun, if you understand Nafsaka, it shouldn't be fine. It should be fine. Sorry, not shouldn't be fine. It should be fine. These are simple words that you already know. You know everything in this in this line, other than a few advanced concepts of the SMA sentences, but you know quite a lot about this. Okay. Any rule applies. Think for Think for the pronouns, 
think about their about the pointers think about the half of nasab think about uh, think about proper followed by common and then think about breaking the chain think about it okay it's a broken relationship between what Dala? between what between falallaka and bakhyun is that what you're saying or bakhyun and nafsaka where should i draw a line and say it's an it's a broken relationship therefore it's an invisible is broken breaking the chain is my last resort breaking the chain is my last resort now let's let's look on the let's look at this side first let's look at this let's go one by one okay fala allaka i'm i'm focusing my attention on fala allaka okay Okay, I understand. So you, you cannot find a relationship between Falallaka and Bakhyun, which is true. There is no relationship there. Yes, you're true, you're right, but I also want to understand Falallaka a bit. So how many words are Falallaka? Can we can we factor that down? So how many words are Falallaka? Fala allaka. Fala allaka are three words. Correct. So which ones? There is one fa, there is la alla, and there is ka. This is one word, two word, and three words. Okay. Now I'm moving from I'm moving from right to left. I'm reading in this direction, right? Reading this direction. From right to left. Okay. People continue to connect me on LinkedIn. I'm just too tired of that. Um, sorry about that. Uh, so for Allaka, um, I'm moving from this chart now. Fa Fa is just a connector, meaning then or so. It means then or so. Okay. So it 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 is it it has it has nothing to do with uh, any anything else. It's just a connector, uh, meaning then or so. Okay. Um, then, I, then comes the la'alla. La'alla. What is la'alla? Do you know the word la'alla? Do have we have we heard about this word somewhere? Do we know about this? What is it? What is it? La'alla. Sounds familiar to me. It's a harf of nasab. Correct. Correct. It's a harf of nasab. With an attached pronoun ka, right? It's a harf of nasab fragment with an attached pronoun ka. So when I see harf of nasab with its pronoun, with its ism, and its ism is this ka, and this lalla is the harf of harf of nasab. Can't I say that invisible is is after this? Shouldn't invisible is be after harf of nasab and its ism? It's my rule number three, isn't it? You see that? It's my rule number three. Okay. It's my rule number three. Is that clear to everybody? Do you all see that? It is interesting indeed. It's very mathematical, buddy. It's very mathematical. It's a, it's a, it's not a chance game. It's very, very intellectual and mathematical, analytical. You just have to look about, look things a bit closely, inshallah. And and and, and when you get practice, it's uh, it gets easier, inshallah. It's it easier. Good, excellent. Let's move forward a bit. Next one should be very simple for you guys. Very simple. Antum Muslimuna. Antum Muslimuna. I don't think you should have a second thought on this. It's pretty straightforward. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Right? Antum is an independent pronoun. Yes. 
and there is an invisible is after it. There is an invisible is after it. Okay. You are Muslims, okay? Antum Muslim. Antum is you, plural, right? You, plural, and Muslimuna as Muslims. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a plural, right? Antum means you, and Muslimuna is Muslims. You are Muslims, okay? When you would translate it, you would say you are Muslims. Okay, good. <clears throat> Let's go to the next one. Wahuwal Rafurul Wadudu. Wahuwal Rafurul Wadudu. Where is the invisible is and why? Which rule applies? Should be simple. Where is the invisible is and why? Which rule applies? You're already experts on invisible is. You will find invisible is on streets all the time. Rule number one, correct. So it's the independent pronoun. It's an independent pronoun. Rule number one applies. Independent pronoun after hua, invisible is. Perfect, excellent. Same is the next one. There's not no brainer. Hu Allah, we did an example as well. Yes, and vow is a connector. You're right, Tala. Vow is a connector in the previous one. Same story here. Rule number one applies. Is. Hu Allahu. Yes, he is Allah. He is Allah. Okay. Now let's look at this one. This is a bit interesting one. And I want you to pay some attention here a bit more. Okay. Inna ya juja wa ma juja. Okay. Inna ya juja wa ma juja. Now, where is the invisible is? Let's see if you can find it. Let's see if you can find it. Try to find it yourself if you can. Try to find it yourself if you can. Any any ideas? Yes, that's true. The rule is half of nasab. It's rule number three, half of nasab followed by its ism. So I completely see half of nasab here. Half of nasab is there. Where is the ism? Where is the ism of half of nasab? And ya juja, you say this talha inna ya juja, inna ya juja. Is that what you're saying? Which is right. If you're saying this, this is right. You're playing around, mate. You're saying juj because juj is in two words. Yajuj and Majuj, you being diplomatic. Is it Yajuj you're saying or you Majuj you're saying? <laughs> you're smart, I know. I know you. <laughs> Which one is it? Is it in the Yajuja or is it Majuja? <laughs> let me let me you're right i i know where you're going you're playing safe aren't you you're playing safe okay uh, let, let, let me let me let me tell you about this yes correct so they're both they both they both are the isms of idna they both are the isms of inna why are they both because there is a connector between them. 
is a connector bow between them that keeps them together. It's like a glue. It's like a glue. Inna ya juja va ma juja. What happens here is inna makes the ya juj nasab. But as soon as it runs away, it says, wow says, no, 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 no. Inna, you cannot run away like this because I am connecting ya juj and ma juj. So you cannot just make ya juja nasab. You have to make ma juja nasab as well because I'm connecting them. Therefore, Inna jumps from there and also makes Majuja Nasab. There are two isms here that are isms of Inna. Okay? And there are two isms because, because there is a vow connector between them. Otherwise, what is the reason of Majuja to be Nasab? Why should it be Nasab? It ism becomes Nasab if it is. If it is for it, if if it has an is half of nasab before it, that's what we know. Yes, otherwise there's no reason. So these two isms belong to inna. Okay, therefore you would just complete the chain, this entire thing, this entire thing, from yajuja to majuda, all of this. This is your half of nasab fragment. Half of nasab fragment. Okay. And after this half of Nasa fragment, you would then put this invisible is. Okay? Okay? Great. Excellent. Let's look at this one. How much time we've got? Uh, Okay, we just got six minutes. Okay, fine. Um, so let's look at this one. Ali hukum ilahun vahidun. Ali hukum ilahun vahidun. Now let's see if you can solve this. Let's see if you can solve this. Just take it word by word. Just take it word by word from the right to the left. Try to understand what's happening. Try to understand what's happening. Think about the pronoun, then think about the pointer, then think about the harf of nasab, and then think about proper followed by common, and then think about the break in the chain. Okay, any any thoughts? So what I'm looking at here is I'm looking at I'm looking at the the first word. I'm looking at alehu. So sorry, ilahu. Ilahu is the first word. And then there is something attached to it. Kum. Okay. It's kum. Is there a fragment here? Is there a fragment here? Any fragment operating here? Sorry, kum. Ilahu kum. How is it harf of jar, Tala? So what you have in harf of jar is ila. I understand what you what where you're coming from. So what you have in harf of jar is this. Right, ila. But when it, when you combine it with a with thing else, it gives you those two dots, don't they? Gives you those two dots, but we don't have it. If you get this part and saying it's ila, no, that's not the case. This is not that ila. Okay, it's not the case. It has this ha. If this is ila, what is this two? 
What is this who? It is not ilaf. Okay? So it cannot be a harf of jar. Okay? So what's happening here is ilahu is one word. It's an ism. Ilahu is an ism which is light and it does not have an al. Okay? It is light and it has an attached pronoun which is in jar state. Therefore, it's an idafa. It's an idafa. It's an idafa. Idafa fragment. Okay? Forward. When you go forward, you find no connection between between uh, because it's an idafa before i tell you that be, 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 because it's an idafa you just cannot break them apart when between the two words when you have a connection between the two words you cannot break them apart why kum is in jar state is that the question tala so you know kum is the the form of antum, yes, you know this. It's a nasab or jar form of and build an idaf. There is a mudaf, there is a mudaf, and then there is a mudafile, right? There is a mudafile. Yeah. So mudafile has to be ja. No, I knew it was just a slip of mine. I know you knew it. Okay, good. Um, so when you when you have two words connected together, you cannot break them apart. You just cannot. So you cannot take ilahu its relationship with ilahun in the front. Okay, you cannot you cannot do this. This is this is. This is unfair. This is unjust. Ilahu is in complete love with Kum, and you cannot just part them. You cannot just say, Ilahu, just go and start talking to this Ilahun. You cannot do this. This is wrong. Okay? You cannot do this. So, what you can do is you can pick up the entire fragment. Oops. Oops. You pick up the entire fragment, this, this bit. And then you find a relationship. Is there, re is there any relationship? And you will not find it. There is no relationship between these two things. There's nothing here. So that is a typical break in the chain case. Break in the chain case. Okay. There's another way of looking at it, though, that I want to tell you as well. Is another way of looking at it. So if I ask you to do tell me the type of the word ilahu, can you tell me if it is common or proper? Can you tell me if ilahu is common or proper? What is ilahu? Common or proper? Is it common or proper? What do you think? Think again. Think again. A word before of is proper if the word after of is proper. Word after. So in this idafa, the word after of is it proper or not? What is what is kum? Is kum proper or not? Is kum proper or not? Just bring things together. So the word before of is proper if the word after of is proper. So the, the kum is proper. Therefore, alehun is also proper. Right? right, but then you pick up this alehun. You pick up this alehun. What's happening? You pick up this alehun, and this entire fragment you call it proper. Say, okay, it's it's a proper fragment, right? It's proper. 
Now you pick up, you pick up alehun and you see this ilahun, and you find it common, and you find it common. Okay, you find it common. Then, based on that, you could say it is proper followed by common. You could say it is proper followed by common. Okay. But from my perspective, from my perspective, breaking the chain is a, is a better and easier approach uh, to apply this here. Okay, breaking the chain is better. But I'm just trying to, uh, uh, I mean, guide you to how you could potentially think about this. Okay. Now, so what we have, we have three minutes up. Uh, so what I'll do, I'll leave the rest for you, inshallah. I'll leave the rest for you to solve at home. Just do some practice on this. Find the invisible is. And then in the next class, we'll dive more into the ism-based sentences, jumla ismias, and we'll study a bit more about them uh, in more detail, inshallah. And this, and then we'll also tr start to pick up the ayahs in the Quran and and try to try to analyze them a bit more. Okay, this will open up a lot, inshallah, for you. So it's a, it's an entirely new domain, and things are starting to come together slowly, slowly, slowly. They're starting to come together. So don't give up. Keep on going. Keep on going, inshallah. Okay, and you will keep on things in the Quran, inshallah, like that. Okay. So thank you very much for joining. Uh, if you have missed something, please do take the class again or the, or the part that is missed. Don't miss out. Don't leave. And inshallah, I'll see you on next Saturday, same time, same channel. And stay safe, inshallah, in the aman of Allah. And please do pray for me. Um, I need loads uh, of prayers. Okay? Thank you very much. And jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.